Hi everyone, welcome to this next session of Kaplan's USMLE Step 1 Q-Blast. My name is Dr. Matt Alvin. I'm an incoming medical intern going into radiology. Let's get started on our way to get that higher score on test day. So for this question, again, long question that we have here, but this is the stuff that you really got to think hard on. This is a good critical thinking question and don't let it intimidate you. That's why you're practicing with me here today and practicing at home so that you're ready no matter what this test throws your way. We've got a 41 year old woman. She comes to the doctor because of a recent history of joint pain in her hands and knees and she's got some mild weight loss and fatigue. Notice what I bolded there. Big picture stuff. Middle aged woman comes in for joint pain. Now we've got a time frame. Two week history. Swelling behind the left knee. She states the swelling has been not constant, but progressively growing. And she said pain and difficulty in flexing the knee. And then we're told a lab value, rheumatoid factor positive. Physical exam shows an erythematous, fluid filled mass in the left lateral popliteal fossa. Anatomy, anatomy, anatomy here. The left lateral popliteal fossa overlying anatomy, 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 the tendon of the biceps femoris. Where's the biceps femoris? How is my anatomy of my popliteal fossa? This is the stuff you gotta know. During aspiration of the cyst, a structure immediately adjacent to the tendon is injured. So whatever this cyst is, we just somehow injured something next to the tendon of the biceps femoris. So a lot of stuff going on here, but what's the question actually asking? The question saying, which of the following losses is most likely to occur in this patient? So crazy question, because it's not even asking us what this thing is behind your knee, how it got there. It's just asking about, okay, we injured this, this structure next to the tendon, so what's gonna happen in the patient? So a lot of critical thinking here. So for our answer choices, notice they all deal with nervous system stuff or vascular. So choice A says we lose the ability to dorsiflex at the ankle. B, flex under the toes we lose. C, loss of plantar flexion at the ankle. D, loss of sensation on the sole of the foot or E, vascular insufficiency to the leg and foot. So take a few moments, go through these answers, think carefully, and select what you think's best. Okay, great. Correct answer here, choice A, loss of dorsiflexion of the ankle, two-step problem. Number one, did you understand what's happening here? What's this mass? So this patient's got Rheumatoid factor positive, so potentially rheumatoid arthritis. What's common in rheumatoid arthritis? A Baker cyst, or what can be known as a popliteal cyst, defined as just basically the cyst that enlarges, filled with synovial fluid, can become painful or inflamed, but it's not that big deal because most of them, they're small, they resolve spontaneously, and if not, come right in to see the doctor, which is all of you. We're gonna aspirate it, get rid of it, patient's gonna be okay. However, there's the possibility because of all the important structures right in that popliteal fossa that we can injure something. And here, what you should have recognized that got injured next to that tendon of the biceps femoris is the common fibular, or for some of you, peroneal nerve. So key points about that, it's adjacent to the tendon of the biceps femoris. The deep fibular component, remember common fibular nerve goes into superficial component and deep fibular component. That's what innervates our ankle dorsiflexors. So if we mess with the common fibular nerve, we're not gonna be able to dorsiflex our foot. You're gonna get a foot drop that happens. That's probably a common term you've heard. This is a way that we can get that foot drop. So high yield takeaway, know your anatomy. This diagram I have in front of you here, do you know what the popliteal fossa is? What structures are in there? The arteries, the veins, the nerves, what innervates what? If you knew all that, this question should have been pretty straightforward to you. If not, take some time, go back, review your anatomy. All those basic science concepts, you gotta have a good foundation in if you want that higher score on test day. So great job today. Thanks for joining me for Kaplan's USMLE Step 1 Q-Blast. I'm Dr. Matt Alvin, and I will see you guys next time.